Hi, Moglets. Today we're playing Star Rail. I am actually completely in love with this game. And today I basically just wanted to go over my progress, some, some things I've learned, some tips and stuff like that. We are currently level 43. I kind of wanted to talk about getting from 30 to 40 to start. I think getting to level 30 in the first place is pretty fast. We have a lot of uh, main story quests, other side quests. And then once you get to around level 30 to 35, you have nothing anymore. So a big question I had throughout, you know, low 30s to 40 is what should I be spending my resin on? Your first priority is of course, farming this stuff and or XP books if you need it for your main team, your main four characters. Raising all the important talents, and then if you need some of this stuff for their level, ascension, light cones, etc., then do this. Maxing your main team for the equilibrium level you have should always be first priority. Preparing in advance for the next equilibrium level is a little bit more up to personal preference. Personally, I don't prepare that much for the next equilibrium level because this game works very similar to Genshin in that as you raise your equilibrium level, you will obtain better rewards from all of this stuff we were just talking about. As you get higher and higher equilibrium level, you'll need a lot more stuff. Even at equilibrium level three, we're still not like fully caught up with traces yet because I didn't prepare too much. But the traces I have been farming were equilibrium three, which means we're getting more of the materials if you know what I'm saying. In my case, back in equilibrium level two, so from level 30 to 40, my characters were caught up pretty quickly. So what did I spend the rest of my resin on until level 40? My favorite piece of content by far actually is probably simulated universe. I love simulated universe. Most of my resin starting from around level 34 to 35 went to world six here. It might be tough to get there in the first place and I'm not free to play by any means, but I'm also not some massive whale. I do have Sila, but she is E0. And outside of that, my only other five star is Claw. Lara, which I got from the first 50 standard pulls. Before Equilibrium 4, this is the only place you can get 5-star relics. And in my opinion, this is the best 5-star set for damage dealers. You can also get 5-star drops from, from World 5, and there is a pretty good damage dealer set, but in my opinion, the World 6 one is better. If we go to my relics section, you can see that I have dropped quite a bit of Trailblaze power here. If you play Genshin, then these are very similar to Goblets. They are the only thing that can have elemental damage boost, um, unfortunately, I've not been able to get a quantum damage boost for my Sila yet, nor have I gotten a physical damage boost for my Clara, which is a little annoying. We have gotten a quantum damage boost on the other set, so I've raised it for now, though eventually I will want to swap over to this set. I do want to do a little team update and talk about the, the different mechanics I've come across. So our current team is Clara, Sila, Tingyun, and Natasha. They're all pretty low idle on level. Everyone is E0, except for Natasha, which is E1. The logic behind this team is pretty strong straightforward. Sila is our damage dealer. Natasha is our healer. Tingyun is our buffer for Sila. And Clara is the taunter slash tank so that they're not focusing on Sila and killing her. I do purely focus on maxing Sila first as she is the damage dealer. She is fully done, ready for the next Eidolon level. Her relics are all maxed as well because I haven't gotten around to farming the five star normal relics yet. Her build is crit rate body, speed boots, quantum damage orb and attack link rope. The only thing I'm not really sure about here is the speed boots, of course. I do feel like since you can only get speed on one relic, it's probably important. I did make sure my Tingyun has a little bit more speed than my Sila so that she can go first and boost Sila before Sila does anything. Speed, if you didn't know, because it's not a stat in Genshin, does determine who goes first. And I'm quite sure it also determines how quickly they go again. She buffs attack and just straight up damage with her burst. So very, very nice buffer when, you're, when you only really care about buffing one unit. There are some buffers that buff the entire party, but when Sila's doing 80 to 90% of the damage anyway, makes sense to just focus on her. Natasha is an obvious choice. At this stage of the game, she is 1000% necessary, even if you have Bailu, because for Forgotten Hull, you need two teams. I heard we will have another Abundance character soon, so I'm probably just gonna try and get them instead of waiting for Bailu. But yeah, raise Natasha. Or if you do have Bailu, then I guess you could wait for the other Abundance character. She's a very basic healer, heals one ally with her skill and the whole party with her burst. Her relics definitely have the second most investment after Sila because I feel like she is important. She also has speed boots because I feel like, you know, more turns, more healing. Outside of that, she has energy regeneration rate link rope, which I'm not too sure about yet. HP orb as her healing does scale with HP and outgoing healing boost body. I don't really care too much about substats yet because I feel like you can't really care about substats this early on. 
there, just whatever. And since we are talking a lot about relics now, there is one other thing I wanted to talk about, a pretty insane item if you bought the battle pass. Unfortunately, we've reached our weekly limit, so we can't even get to battle pass 40, unless we spend 10 more trailblaze power. Sure, let's just do one run here. In Genshin, this doesn't count towards the weekly limit, so I'm really hoping this also doesn't. It doesn't, thank God. <laughs> but yeah, we got the self-modeling resin. Rare material used to custom make relics. And we also got 200 relic remains. I think we need 100 to uh, use this. We also got this little gift box. This is material for the traces that we can't even use yet until we are equilibrium four. But I'll just grab the one for Sila because I know we'll need a bunch of them anyway. So once you hit level 40, you do get a new tab in Synthesize. This is where you can make artifacts. You don't actually need the item we got. Let's say we wanted some five-star boots for our Sila. We can do that. We can use 100 of the 200 books we got and make that. However, if you want to decide what the main stat is, then you need this self-modeling resin. Sadly, you can't choose also the substats. That would have been crazy but uh, it's still pretty cool. I would never use it on boots. The only thing I would ever use this item on is planar spheres because by far it has the most substats of any relic. All the different element boosts plus HP attack and death. So when you finally do get an element boost, very low chance it's gonna be the one you actually want. On the same set, I also do want physical damage boost for my Clara, which I probably mentioned earlier. So it would be smarter to wait until either a physical damage boost or a quantum damage boost drops from world six. And then I use the self-modeling resin to craft the other one. That's honestly what I would much rather do. But since we do have 200 of the books and we don't only need 100, we can go ahead and try something. The body relic has seven different main sets as well, so it might not be a horrible contender. Uh, feet only have four, speed, attack, HP, and death. Let's just hope we get lucky, get a crit piece, I guess. Ta-da, it's death. Big surprise. And yeah, another thing is you can get five-star normal relics from Cavern of Corrosion, but you can only get five-star relics on difficulty three after you hit level 40. And even after level 40, you are still only getting one five-star per run like you are before level 40 if you can make it to world six in simulated universe. There is also a lot of RNG in simulated universe. So even if it feels completely hopeless, you know, the first time you run through it, if you just keep trying more and more, you'll eventually get like a really lucky and good run. That's what I had to do. I kind of had to brute force it, honestly. So I don't know how many times I'd run through World 5 to finally get a lucky run and be able to beat it. But I eventually did and then could start farming Simulated Universe World 6 for those five star relics. Other ways to level up decently quickly outside of just spinning Trailblaze power whenever you have it, obviously doing all the quests you get, give you XP, pulling out an interactive map and farming all the treasures in every area. When you get to this newest world, there are a few special puzzle locations where you can get a good amount of chests spanning over the course of three days. I never did the last one just so I can show you here. These little puzzle pieces, you can go and do two or three puzzles and get two or three chests over three days. I believe there are three of these in total. Lots of XP to get here in this newest area via chests and puzzles. Daily quests are also incredibly important for getting uh, XP. You get nearly 1500 XP per day just from daily quests. So make sure to do at least enough to get to the 500 mark. I don't remember it being 290, but I'll double check. I guess the other thing is gotcha. Mine isn't here anymore, but we do have uh, these 50 beginner warps you can do at the cost of 40 warps because it's 20% off. I would definitely recommend you do those. You're guaranteed a five-star character. I wouldn't use Stellar Jade on it though. You do get these star rail passes, these standard ones, just by going through the quest and leveling up, you'll get those 40 fast. I guess a little bit of a personal gotcha update. Since my Sela summons, I've only been summoning on standard with the odd star rail pass I get here and there. We have done 91 pulls here. The only thing we got at I think 77 pity was Sleep Like the Dead. It's a hunt card. It sounds pretty good, but I do have Sila's signature light cone already, so I don't think I would replace it. And I have no plans to raise another hunt character right now. There are a few standard units I really want, mainly Branya and Bailu. Branya's a sort of buffer. Bailu is the other healer in the entire game. I think a part sounds pretty good as well. Shields. But yeah, I'm mostly just saving my Stellar Jade for more Trailblaze power and or the next banner. We are fully finished with our Operation Briefing. I never even tried Stage 13 at Forgotten Hall because I don't actually have two teams raised. I don't even know how I got through Floor 12. But yeah, starting at Floor 11, you have two teams here. 
We do have like some units. I recently raised the main character to 60 and I still only have Natasha as my one healer. So it's a bit hard, of course. It's also really easy to forget about Pom Pom. I sometimes go like five or six levels without claiming these rewards. I do want to like try and give you the strategy I use to get through these. Of course, this will be a lot easier because my characters are 60 now. But again, I was doing this beforehand and you don't even actually need to kill the last boss. You just need to kill the first elite to be able to use your trailblaze power and get a five star relic. As for the path, I am quite sure you do not have access to abundance until at least world five but abundance for me has been by far the best. It's not the fastest or most overpowered like Hunt, but I've had by far the most success with this, especially before level 40. Though I will say I have not tried all paths. There are some that focus on things my characters just don't do, like uh, Remembrance is all about freezing enemies and while some blessings can just do that, it just didn't really seem to fit with my team. Preservation's all about shields which is a decent one as well. Before World 5, I had a lot of success with Destruction as well. There are some really good cards, which you can still pick regardless of which path you choose. You're just more likely to get the cards of the path you choose. This one from Destruction, when player characters are hit, damage taken by the character is equally distributed among all allies. When I first read this, I was like, that doesn't sound that great. They're still going to take all the same damage, but it's actually crazy, especially paired with the abundance path. You'll like almost never die unless you're incredibly weak. At least that's been my experience. It could be my team is better suited to take advantage of these buffs. I'm not sure. Its blessings have a special dewdrop ability. So if you focus on getting these as well, it definitely helps the abundance path be more offensive. I've had some relatively fast abundance path runs because of dewdrop. I have tried the hunt path several times because that's what my friends mostly use and it's just never as good or consistent for me personally. Feel free to give that a try as well. But yeah, I can't say too much about it. There are some pretty cracked cards in there like Celestial Annihilation. You can get a ton of turns in a row with this, especially if you also have Sila. So let's go ahead and run through a simulated universe real quick. And I'll just give you some tips that I've personally been using myself to get through these later worlds. Again, abundance was the only thing I could actually clear it with. So we're going to go with abundance. I personally always chose obtain one curio. There are some incredibly strong curios. Yeah, here it is. The galactic big lotto. This one can be really insane purely because of this. I've ended runs with like 11 curios. So this curio gives you a small chance of gaining another curio when you destroy objects. There's also a small chance for your entire party to lose 99% of their HP. Granted, that could very well happen the first time you destroy an object and then your run is more or less ruined. But I think it's worth the risk, especially if you can get it so early on. There is another curio that stacks with this one. It's a curio that doubles the amount of destroyable objects and doubles the rewards from them. So if you destroy one and get a curio from it, you're actually gonna get two curios. It's pretty crazy. Also, I guess I should note, you won't actually be able to select a curio until a certain world. I'm not sure which one it is. I think it starts at world five. Yeah. There we go. We got Sealing Wax of Nihility. My ability tree is pretty far along as well because I have been playing so much simulated universe. So again, this is something that would make it easier for me. So we can choose our first blessing. Obviously, as we are on the abundance path, our priority is to get three abundance blessings first. At a certain point in the ability tree, you can reset blessings. Most of the time, I try to only reset when it's three stars and there's none of the three stars I want. So we're just gonna take this two star destruction. Now we have a couple of abundance. If I have the choice, two stars are generally better than one stars. I also like to have brief description turned off so I can see exactly what's going on here. There we go, we got another. This one isn't that strong, but you know, we could get a reroll curio later and transform all these into random curios. When there are three blessings I really don't care about at all, then I'm going to reset and just pray that one of them is better. Combat or occurrence? Occurrence is big, big RNG. Combat isn't. You'll guaranteed get one or two blessings from combat. You might just have something bad happen to you on occurrence, but it could potentially be way better than just one or two, one to two star blessings. So if I'm really struggling, I go occurrence because you know, could have really good luck. There we go, got another curio. With this one, we can reset our blessings for free ones. That's cool. We either get a single one to two star blessing or a hundred cosmic fragments. Usually I go for the blessing because you can choose here. And actually we should have a free reset, but I guess it doesn't count for this. Unfortunately, still no abundance, but this hunt card in particular is pretty crazy, especially once it's enhanced. We'll just keep going occurrence because it is funner, honestly. Will this be the one we lose all of our HP? No, we randomly level up two blessings after obtaining this curio. 
Okay, the, yeah, the two one stars, whatever. <laughs> Better than losing 99% of my HP though. Oh, this occurrence uh, gives us a negative curio or a hundred cosmic fragments, but I always choose the negative curio. Oh no, I was thinking of the corrupted curio where after you do three battles with the corrupted curio, it transforms into a good curio. Well, we must obviously get something else as well. A three, oh, 300 cosmic fragments. All right, I mean, maybe it pays for itself. So this is usually a bad sign. When we get to elite and we still haven't gotten three abundance cards, this is generally not good. Uh, we'll see if we can kill him anyway. This one, I half auto, half don't auto. Uh, there is an unability this boss does that is super important to manually control your characters for. Yep, here, Binding of the Golden Age. You need to make sure you're always attacking this guy because each time you attack him after he does that, he loses one stack. Two out of four don't do damage with their skill. So definitely need to actually attack. Each time you attack, he loses one stack of this stuff. And then here, as you can see, it was only like three attacks instead of up to nine that it could have been. If you're unlucky, like eight of those nine attacks can go to a single character and just one shot them. Or I guess eight shot them, but kill them in one turn. So yeah, this is what I'm talking about. None of these three star cards I care about. This is definitely, I mean, we have a free reset now, of course, but even if we didn't though, it's definitely worth it. So now we have two abundance cards. Here we have the dew drop I was talking about earlier. Uh, definitely makes abundance a little bit more offensive. This one is also pretty insane. I would like to get them both, but I'll get dew drop for now. Next battle, we're guaranteed to get a three star rarity card and we can go ahead and choose an immersion reward. We have three of these tokens anyway, so may as well. Uh, we got a link chain, four subs, double crit lines unfortunately on the def set could have been so good if it was just on the other set damn this is usually the time i lose 99 hp because these do count as destroyable objects as well yep, yep there we go <laughs> we did heal a little bit as well from one of them i could have sworn we have three abundance by now but there is another dew drop so we'll so we'll grab that yeah, there it is. What, that was our third card? Damn, we're, we're already almost at second elite. Okay, yeah, now we have it. We're gonna use it, of course. There we go, full health. I doubt we're gonna be able to get up to six abundance cards, but I would really prefer that uh, before the boss. It's crazy we've only gotten three so far, but I guess I was choosing occurrence most of the time, so there's that. Finally, we got one abundance after two resets. Let's just go blue occurrence again. Oh, but this was not a really good occurrence as far as I'm aware. Yep, we either lose half our cosmic fragments or enter battle and then get one blessing if we can win. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. I would say definitely like on elite level though. Here we do have another abundance. That's cool. This might be the sixth. I'm hoping it is. Yes, it was. Okay, if we get up to 10 abundance blessings, we can choose a second one, but the one I always go for first is Anata. These do switch, so if you're trying to like mimic my strategy, don't just go for the first one because these are in different places all the time. It's called Anata. After using Abundance for the first time, it will appear on the action order. So in addition to just being able to use it when you have full energy, it will also free of energy charge every now and then just heal your team. So you basically have two Abundance resonances at that point, one that happens automatically and one that you can choose whenever it happens, as long as you're not playing auto. The one other blessing that would really make this run perfect is that Destruction blessing we were talking about the one that makes everyone take equal damage we do have an elite here if we can beat him we can choose a three star we're gonna refresh those two times if necessary and just pray we get that destruction card and you can see it over there in the action list order once she is at the top it'll just heal us whether we need it or not but we also get a max hp boost so it's still helpful even if we don't need healing at that point point. and there he goes let's see our blessings yes there it is even though we do have this really cool abundance one here I want this one. Every time I have this on Abundance Path, it's just easy sailing from there. We can also select another Curio. What's important to note is after the second Elite boss, you might not even have another battle. You might more or less go straight to boss. So this one might be completely useless because it says when choosing your blessings after winning a battle. On the other hand, I don't really care about either of these either, but we'll get preservation because we, we do have that crit damage shield buff thing. We'll go ahead and grab another one of these. Ooh, wait, this is on the right set. We have not gotten a single five-star attack link rope yet. So please, attack, please. No, it's just break effect. So then we have respite. Again, since we have that negative curio, I am going to just test my luck and enhance two random blessings. We should still have enough to level up the important ones. Okay, this is like the worst one it could have leveled up. We basically never have a shield. Oh, there we go. Okay, we got this insane destruction card leveled up. Basically, it just makes us take 15% less damage, which, you know, combined with what it's already doing is, is really good. Oh, look at that. We actually do have a battle. 
Just one little dude though. Transaction can be incredibly good, but it can be also pretty mid. Most of the time these are exchange health for blessings. No, now it's cosmic fragments for blessings, so it's still okay, I guess. And then one more respite before the boss. So with our current cosmic fragments and this negative curio we have, we can only enhance one three star and one two star. We're gonna go for this abundance, basically increases the damage of dewdrop. And since we are pretty tanky slash healing focused, uh, a little bit more damage wouldn't be bad. We'll just grab this one. None of the ones we had were actually got that much more insane once enhanced. So here's the world six boss now. I wanna show you the entirety of it just so you can see the abundance plus that destruction card probably just massively sped up so it doesn't take forever. We're basically indestructible. And yes, I know my characters are level 60 now and we're past level 40, but this is the same strategy I was using before level 40 when my characters were still level 50. You can also see that we are basically never having to actually use our abundance energy because of the fact we're all taking damage at the same rate. One Natasha burst has like maximum effectiveness as well as the abundance path thing in the action queue. It has max effectiveness because everyone has the same damage on them and it's all AOE healing. In phase two and three, Branya is there buffing. Uh, also, Cocolia has an insanely strong burst. So that's probably when you'll see we get close-ish to dying, but still like healthy enough, especially when we have Natasha's burst always ready and the abundant stuff doing its thing. Also, by no means, this is the best strategy ever. This is just what has worked for me. So feel free to give it a try. If you think it's garbage, then you move on to something else, I guess. So we're moving on to last phase here. Yes. Uh, my units keep getting frozen a lot, which is why I really prefer to try and get 10 abundance cards. Then we can choose two of those paths and the other one I like to choose protects us from one debuff. So that really helps with all this freezing stuff. All in all, this wasn't a very lucky run outside of that lottery curio not instantly destroying our team. There was one instance I saw where our team Yoon was in red HP, so most likely she would have died had we not been level 60, but we probably could have still done it without her. Okay, wrong rope don't care of course it's attack i should also mention i have been spending stellar jades on trailblaze power pretty sure it's impossible to be level 43 at this stage of the game without doing so this isn't a recommendation to or against it that's just the way i personally like to play i'd rather do less gotcha and play more generally for free to play and such it's not recommended to ever spend stellar jade on trailblaze power so this isn't advice i usually do three to five refreshes per day when it's still cheap i never have and most likely never will use 150 for 60 trailblaze power, so kind of like how I did in Genshin, honestly. One more chance, physical or quantum, please. Lightning. We have like four lightnings now. Whatever, but that was a run through simulated universe. Like I said, I believe we got four curios from this lottery ticket thing uh, before it killed us and exploded, but they weren't like super good curios or anything in my opinion. Then we had the negative one there, which was a little annoying at the end, but my point is it could have gone a lot better. So yeah, that was a lot about simulated universe, but I definitely don't think it's a bad thing to focus on from that level 30 to 40 gap. I mean, you know, I do have battle pass, which means most of my standard materials like traveler's guide, light cone enhancement stuff and uh, credits or gold or whatever are more or less covered by battle pass. So you could have to spend a lot of trailblaze power here instead of spending it in simulated universe. But like I said, first priority is maxing your main team for your given equilibrium level and from there you can decide to try and get through simulated universe or prepare in advance for the next equilibrium level in my experience the uh calyx crimson rewards don't change massively um, from equilibrium two to three so you could prepare some of this stuff in advance damn this song kind of goes hard though but all right i guess that'll pretty much do it if you have any other general beginner tips and such you think are important Drop them in the comments down below. Leaving a like or subscribing to the channel if you enjoyed is always greatly appreciated as well. Thanks, as always, for watching, and until next time.